All right, we thank God for being here today. Amen. Thank God. His grace is sufficient, right? His grace is sufficient, right? Yeah. Where does it say? His ear is not too heavy where it cannot hear. His arm is not too short to where it cannot reach. Thank Amen. God. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what I want you all to do right now with me is I want us to see, I want us to say three Big hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. All right? So let's say the three big hallelujah, hallelujahs, hallelujah. Are we ready? Yeah. Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Because I was told, I was told, I was told when blessings go up, when, pra when praise go up, blessings come down. That's what I've been told. Amen. I've been told that. Right? When blessings, when praises go up, blessings come down. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. So our title for today is, It is Good for Us to Be Here. Amen. It is good for us to be here. People are in different places. I want to let you all know that. There are people in many different places right now. Right? Everybody, everybody hearing me? Everybody hearing me? There are people in many different places. There are people at ball games. There are people at parties. There are people at picnics. There are people at work. There are people at the mall. But it is good for us to be here. It is good for us to be here. Amen. Now, where is here? In the house of God. Amen. Being in church, it is good for us to be here. Right? It is good. It is good. It is good. It is good. It is oh so good. So I thank God for that. And no, it isn't the same to stay at home and just to pray. So we say, oh, I don't have to go out to church. I can just, me and God, I can pray right here. Yeah, you can pray right there, but it's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same at all. Because it is good for us to be here. And the reason why is we can hear the testimonies of people. We can hear the goodness that God has done and see and hear not only not only just hear it, but we can hear also the enthusiasm and, and we can see the smiles on their faces and how they've been blessed by what's yeah. been going on. Yeah. So that's one reason why it's good to be here. It's also good to be here to hear the sounds of the sound of praise. When you hear a, a sound of true praise, it sounds good. Thank you. It is a good sound when you hear praise. It is a good sound. And not only just to hear praise, but to also offer and be a part of that praise. To be a part of it. To be a part of that praise. And knowing that we're doing what we're supposed to do. Make a joyful noise, the Bible says, unto the Lord. Right? Also, the Bible talks about giving him, giving him the praise, give him the fruit of praise. Right? Which, you know, giving him the praise, which is the, the fruits of our mouth. Amen. Right? So giving him that praise. Giving him the praise. So it's good to, for us to not only hear the praise, but to give the praise. And last but not least, it's good for us to hear the word of God. It is good for us to hear the word of God. And see... You have to be in church for that. You want to know why? I know that. Primarily that goes on in church because it says, how can they hear without a preacher? How can they hear without a preacher? So most people who are staying at home, where's their preacher at? How can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? So it is good for us to be here. There's a song, so glad I'm here. So glad I'm here. So glad I'm here in Jesus' name. So glad I'm here. So glad I'm here. So glad I'm here in Jesus' name. It's so good to be here. It's so good to be here because when you're here, you have an opportunity to see God move. I'm serious. When you're in church, we see God move last, last Sunday in church. Amen. Whenever you're in church, 
You have a good opportunity. That's probably, the, that's probably the best opportunity where you will get a chance to see God move. It's in church. And I'm going to tell you why. We're going to go to Matthew 18 and 20. Can somebody find out and read it out loud for me? Matthew 18 and 20. And that's why I know that you have the greatest opportunity to see God move in church. 18 and 20. It was a sword drawer. Some people probably could beat by now. Matthew 18 and 20. Got it. Read it loud, please. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Did it say whenever you're at home by yourself, there I am, gathered in the midst? It said whenever two or three are gathered together in my name. Two or three gathered together in your name. What's the purpose of coming to church? You're gathering the name, gathering, uh, gathering together in the name of Jesus when you come to church. Yeah. Right? It's about Jesus when you come to church. You're not, at a, you're not at a ball game when you come to church. You're not at the mall when you come to church. You're coming to church to worship the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So it says when two or three are gathered together in my name, yeah. there I am in the midst. So you have the greatest opportunity when you're in church. To see the power of God move. You had the greatest opportunities in church to see somebody get healed. To see somebody be delivered. Right? You see that in church. You have the greatest opportunity. Here in church. So it's good for us to be here. It is good for us to be here. So what we're going to do, we don't have a very very uh, long outline. We only have two things on the outline. Two texts on the outline. That's all we have. Not very long at all. So let's go ahead and get into the word of God, which is Matthew 17 verses 1 through 7. And remember, it is our title is, It is Good for Us to Be Here. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter James and John, his brother, and bring them up into a high mountain apart and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Title of the, sort of similar to the title. Lord, it is good for us to be here. Right? It is good. So let's just pause right there. If Peter would have stayed at home, let's say this is their church right now. They're at, they're with Jesus. This is their church. Right? If Peter would have stayed at home. And the rest of them, they would not have seen that transfiguration that the Lord had done. They would have missed it being at home. If they would have been at a ball game, they would have missed it. If they would have been in the mall, they would have missed it. If they would have been at work, they would have missed it. But they were with the Lord Jesus Christ, and they seen, they seen some power go on. And that's what it has to be. We have to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to be with him. And one of the ways is in church, and then even when you leave here, make sure you take him with you. You need to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to be with him. Because when, when you're with Jesus, great things happen. As we see right here. Great things happen. And so he said, it is good for us to be here. If thou will, let us make, make here three tabernacles. See, now this is going to be a side, this is going to be a side topic. Jesus is the one and only. That's a side topic. See, like we're sticking, it's like that we're supposed to be preaching Jesus. What was last week's sermon? Why Jesus? See, like we're supposed to be preaching Jesus. Okay, so remember the side topic is Jesus is the one and only. So let's look at what Peter has said. He said, Lord, it is good for us to be here, if thou wilt. Let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. While he yet spake, 
Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. I'm going to pause there. I'm going to pause there. No, you don't need to build a tabernacle for Moses and for Elias. I, Jesus is the one and only. God said, this is my beloved son. Who I, what did he say? This is my beloved son. Let me find, let me find it here, or, or my words here in, in, my, in my text here. And he said, and behold, a voice came out of the clouds which said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Right? He didn't say anything about Moses and Elias, did he? He didn't say, you know, and guess what? And what else did he say? Hear ye him. Jesus is the one and only. No, we don't need to put anybody up with Jesus. We don't need to build three tabernacles, right? No, we only need to have one tabernacle. We don't need to have anybody be on the same level as Jesus. No, Jesus is the one and only. And get this. Let's, let's keep reading on. We're gonna get, let's gonna give you some, I'm gonna give you some other insight into this. Jesus is the one and only. And whom, so this is what God said. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. Now, if somebody picks that up, mine cuts off here. If somebody picks that up, you're going to find out when they when they got up. I'll just tell I'll just tell the rest of it. When they got up, they only seen Jesus. There was no one else there. It was only Jesus, the one and only. Moses wasn't still there. Elias wasn't still there. But it was Jesus that was there, right? So that so what I want you to know, Jesus is the one and only. So whenever you go about your day, whenever you go about your time, I know it's like kind of two sermons in one here, so you're getting, you're getting a lot in it right here. So when you go about your day, when you go about your, your life, don't put anything in front of Jesus because Jesus is the one and only. Don't put work in front of Jesus. Don't put going to the mall, going shopping in front of Jesus. This is the only time I got to go because I'm going to be busy all week. Well, you know, you're going to have to go without. Don't put anything in front of Jesus. Don't put anything, oh man, you know, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Don't put anything in front of Jesus. He's the one and only. After everything else is gone, after everything else will fade away, Jesus is still going to be there. After the ball game is over, guess who's still there? Jesus. After work is done and you're retired, guess who's still there? It's going to be Jesus. Right? So we need Jesus. He's the one to be the one constant in our life. So he is the one and only. So let's make us put, let us, let us put him number one, the number one in the center of our life. And if something else tries to remove him from the center, you know that's out of place. You know that's out of God. You know that that's, you know you should be rebuking that thing. If something's telling you, instead of going to church, do this, or some, instead of praying, do this, or instead of doing, you know you need to be doing some serious rebuking or whatever that is. Because that's outside that's how, that don't even make no kind of sense. That don't make any kind of sense. I'll just put it in, in, in layman's terms. The saying is, don't bite the hand to feed you. In layman's terms. So why in the world would you go against Jesus, who's the one that's the, supp that's the supplier of your life, the supplier of your happiness? Why would you go against him? The saying is, don't bite the hand to feed you. Even in the natural, they know that. So why? So that doesn't even make any sense. It's like you should be rebuking them things strongly. Oh, you're trying to get me to go against Jesus? I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Oh, you're trying to get me not to go to church? I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You're trying to stop me from praying? I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You're trying to get me to act ungodly? I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We got to make them our one and only. Our one and only. And it's good for us to be here. <laughs> because without you being here, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have heard this. You wouldn't have been encouraged to make Jesus the number one in your life. It is good for us to be here. How can they hear without a preacher? How can they hear without a preacher? There's people hearing a lot of stuff today, but I don't know. It's, not, it's, probably, it's probably not a lot of stuff that's, that's building their soul up. It's not a lot of stuff that's going to move them towards heaven. It's not a lot of stuff that's going to move them towards God. But there's people hearing a lot of stuff today. 
a lot of stuff today. They're here. But they're not being, a lot of them aren't hearing godly things. Let's turn to John. It's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, not John. John 6, chapter 6, verses 65 through 68. Verses 65 through 68. It's good to be here. I got the Holy Ghost in church. I got the Holy Ghost in church. I didn't get the Holy Ghost at home. I know some people get the Holy Ghost at home, but I got it in church. I seen other people get it in church. I got it in church. I heard prophecies come through, come in church. Right? It's good to be here. It is good to be here. And he said, therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more. Walk no more with him. Walk no more with him. Many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Wow. Imagine that. Imagine leaving. Where did they go to? Because it's good to be here. It's good to be with Jesus. Where did they, where did they go from when they left Jesus and they stopped walking with him? Where did they walk to? They left the best thing that they could have ever, they left the best situation they could have ever been in. Where did they go to? I want to, that kind of makes you think that whenever you stop walking, when you got something great, let's say that, you know, think about the greatest car that you could think of. And someone says, you know what, this could be your car, but you got to do this and that and the other. And, and then you leave that car. What do you, is, everything else is downhill, wouldn't you think? Everything else is like, it's downhill from there. So where did they walk to? Why would, it kind of makes you wonder, some people are misled. Some people are misled. They're not, they're, they're, they don't have that spiritual vision. Because everybody didn't leave them. But, but it said, but it did say that some left him. And it said, for that, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. So now all of them didn't leave. So it seemed like that was a, down, that was a, that was a downhill moment from them. They, I mean, I wonder, like, my... What did they think about after the fact of whenever he became, whenever he rose and, and whenever they might have seen and heard the miracles that he'd done after he after they left him? Oh man, we oh man, we done we 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 done a bad thing. We should have stayed with him. We should have stayed with him. See, sometimes people want to take the easy road. And the easy road certainly isn't following the Lord. Some people think that probably, you know, being a Christian is the easy and the easiest thing to be, and the, um, uh, and think that it doesn't take any Christians are weak, but Christians are very strong because Christians have a lot of self denial that they got to do, a lot of self denial. Christians are strong. It takes something to walk with the Lord because whenever the world is lying to get ahead. When you're a Christian, you know you can't lie to get ahead. So you may have to go without because you're not going to tell the lie to get ahead. You have to be strong to be a Christian. You can't be weak being a Christian. But see, it's not any strength of our own. It's not on our own. It's not any strength of our own. It's not my strength. It's not your strength. It's the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the strength of God that allows us to be strong. It's not ours. Right? But it's, you have to be strong to be a Christian, and God, and God equips us to be strong by receiving of his spirit. So let's pick it up at verse 67. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? 
To whom shall we go? That's what I'm saying. Where, where did them other ones go to? If you're looking for truth and you were with Jesus and you leave Jesus, where are you going? You're only going to go into falsehood. If you're looking for truth and you're with Jesus and you leave him, you're not going to truth. If you're, going, if you're with Jesus and you're looking for peace and you leave Jesus, you're not receiving peace. So Simon said, you know, to whom shall we go? So who, to whom shall you go? You're looking for peace, so you're going to leave Jesus? The very source of peace? You're looking for truth? You're leaving Jesus? The very source of truth? To whom, to whom shall we go? To whom shall we go? And he finished saying, Thou hast the words of eternal life. Thou hast the words of eternal life. Where are we going to go? There's no place for us to turn to. There's no place to turn to. Where else are we going to go? So if you're looking for all those people who are out there looking for love, they need to, they need to, they need to find Jesus. They need to be here. They need to be here. And I'm including here being a church and being with Jesus. I'm including it in both them places. You gotta be in, you gotta be in church where Jesus where Jesus is gonna be, where the power is gonna be expressed, and you got to take Jesus with you wherever you go. So they gotta have Jesus in their heart. So they need people who need love. They need to be here. They need to have Jesus. People who are needing to overcome anxiety, they need to have Jesus. They need to be here. People who are depressed, they need to be here. They need to have Jesus, right? People who are struggling from day-to-day -day basic needs, they need to be here. They need to have Jesus. Where else are you going to go? Where else are you going to go? Who's going to take care of you better than Jesus? Who? There's not one. We know Jesus is concerned about those who don't have. He said, he said that when I was hungry, thou fed me. When I was naked, thou clothed me. When I was thirsty, thou gave me drink. And they said, and they said, when did we give, when did, when did we clothe him? When did we give him food? When did we give him drink? That's what they asked. He said, when thou doest to the very least, thou have done it to me. So we know that he's about helping those who are in need. We know he's about that. But we got to, so when you leave Jesus, where are you going? You lost your way when you leave Jesus. And if you don't have, if you never had him, you're lost. You need, you need to find him. So, it is good for us to be here. It's good for us to be in the, to be in Jesus. It is good to be in because when you're in Jesus, you know who you are. People who don't have Jesus, they don't have any idea who they are. When you're Jesus, you know you're a, a child of the King. You are a real. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. When you're in Jesus, you know who you are, right? But when you're not in Jesus, who are you? You don't know. Whenever I'm in Jesus, I can I can look I can look being in Jesus I can look in that Bible and I can look at my ancestor, my ancestors. Although bloodline maybe not so much, but I've been grafted in to that olive tree. I was a Gentile that's been grafted in. The wild olive branch been grafted into that olive tree, right? So now whenever I look at that Bible, I can read about my ancestor Abraham. I can read about my ancestor Moses. That's my lineage. Some people think about, well, I don't know my lineage, and they want to go to that, what, uh, Ancestry.com or whatever it is, I can open up the Bible and look at, okay, yeah, Moses, that's my ancestor. Okay, uh, okay, uh, Daniel, that's my ancestor. Amen. Right? I can just go, I can look at him. That's my ancestor. Peter, James, John, there they go. Paul, that's my ancestors. So I know where I come from, right? And when you're born again, that's where you come from. Because you're born in the same spirit that they got. Who understands me? 
You understand what I'm saying? We're, when, we, when we got that Holy Ghost, we're born in the same spirit that they got. Well, and, and how do I know? I'll give you more Bible. Whenever they were, whenever Jesus was there, they said, Jesus, thy mother and brother are out or without the camp. They're outside the camp. And he said, Who is my mother? Who is my brother? Who is my sister? They that do the will of my father, the same as my mother, my brother, and my sister. So them, them are my ancestors. When I open up that Bible, them are, them are my people. That's my people there. Right? I'm reading about my people. And if you're saved, if you're saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, them are your people. We'll now have the altar call at this time. We'll have the altar call. <laughs>